Many economists praise money for being a great medium of exchange. They would argue that money is a vital part of our capitalist world, as it allows for trade to be carried out efficiently and effortlessly. Instead of me having to give you three loaves of bread for a bunch of bananas, as seen in a barter economy, I can instead give you a couple of lightweight coins or pieces of paper. I can see this as an advantage. However, I think the real reason for using money, or at least one of the main reasons capitalists do not want to get rid of money, is that it is a great way to hoard wealth in secret without the little people getting angry with you. Let me explain. Analogy of the Monkey Lord Imagine a society of monkeys who instead of using dollar coins as a medium of exchange, use bananas. Bananas are seen as having inherent value. You can eat them, and can be used to buy other things you like. The only downside is that they have an expiration date, so it's a good idea to spend them, or eat them, before they go rotten. If you see another monkey walking down the jungle path with two or three bananas, you would continue on your way without a second thought. If the monkey was carrying ten bananas, you might wonder what he is using all those bananas for. If he was pulling a cart full of 100 bananas, you might start to really question what is going on. Imagine if one day an astute young monkey found a way to gather lots of bananas. He set up multiple plantations, each producing hundreds of bananas every day. He was able to afford guards for each plantation, in case any other monkeys decided to help themselves to some bananas. After a couple of years, the monkey had acquired all the banana plantations in the region. His workers had to refer to him as the Monkey Lord. He was able to build a giant fortified treehouse with an enormous larder for the excess bananas. By the end of the growing season, the larder was overflowing. He had lost count of how many bananas he actually had. It didn't really matter, as he had so many bananas that he would never have to worry about his own needs or the needs of his family. Many other monkeys had lost their source of bananas, as most plantations were now in the hands of the self-proclaimed monkey lord. Any entrepreneurial individuals who were able to start up their own plantations were soon bought out, either through a large payout or coercion. Luckily, the monkey lord was a kind individual, and on Friday afternoons would hand out overripe bananas to the needy. Many monkeys would gather around early on a Friday morning in the hope of getting some food for their children and elderly family members. Fights often broke out as monkeys desperately struggled to grab the last rotting banana off the sticky, banana-soaked ground. It wasn't long till the population came to despise the monkey lord. Why was it that he could possess millions of bananas, whereas the bulk of the population was often left to starve? Monkey society was on the verge of collapse. Money in human society. Although the monkey analogy seems extreme, it is actually very similar to modern day human society. The only difference is that it is much easier for rich people to hide their wealth in banks and investment companies. If you see a person walking down the street in a hoodie and jeans, there is no way you can tell whether that person is rich or not. As far as you know, he might well have $300,000 in the bank, a $500,000 yacht docked at the pier, five million dollar investment properties, and may even be the CEO of a large corporation. The point is, money has allowed people to be rich without overtly showing it. Of course, there are those individuals who like to flaunt their wealth, see conspicuous consumption, but in general, the wealthy either don't show off their wealth or have plenty of guards. Why do the elite have guards? Simple. They know what they are doing is wrong and unfair. Just as the monkey lord was hoarding bananas and allowing the population to starve, so do the global elite. For every dollar they possess that they do not need, they are directly taking away resources from the global poor. Poor people are getting into massive debt to keep these people wealthy, and it's about time we all wake up to this fact and do something about it. Money is not being used in a fair way. It is being hoarded by a small number of wealthy individuals who claim they have the national interest at heart. In actuality, they are just greedy and don't know when to stop. Money isn't being used how it should be. It's become a way for the rich to hoard wealth without being caught out by the very people they are plundering. There is no need for someone to own 170 investment properties. It is taking money directly away from the people who need it the most. The problem is that our society praises individuals for being rich. We need to get rid of this attitude and admit that massive wealth disparity is tearing our society apart. 
Every empire that has allowed rampant inequality has ultimately collapsed. It's in the interest of everyone, including the elite, that this does not happen to ours. Money, or at least our system of money, has got to go.